German newspaper Bild has released new interceptions which seem to indicate the majority meddled in elections, this time not from file 339 but from file 184 regarding the local elections in Dieber. The SP has submitted a request containing 55 signatures for the procedure of the dismissal of President Ilir Mehta to the Assembly, demanding a commission be established to investigate the decision made by the Head of State. European Commissioner Johannes Hahn seems to have forgotten Albania while speaking with journalists before the start of the meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council, as he made reference only to the progress of North Macedonia in his speech. It's 6 o'clock on Monday the 17th of June 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTB Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. German newspaper Bild has released new interceptions, this time not from file 339 but from file 184 regarding the local elections in Dibur. According to Bild newspaper, Prime Minister Eddie Rama, former Interior Minister Saimir Tahiri, and MPs Ulsi Manya, Talon Bala, Jemal Cefalia, Pierin Indreo, and Artan Gatsi are all involved in vote buying. Bild says the protagonist of the conversations with the SP officials is Senior Director of the Interior Ministry, Arben Kirshi, who has created a scheme and strategy for buying votes and threatening voters. The Socialist Party has not withdrawn from the June 30 elections, instead formalising the request for the dismissal of President Ilir Mehta, accused of committing a serious violation of the constitution. The head of the Socialist Party's parliamentary group, Talond Bala, has submitted a petition containing 55 signatures to the Assembly. The letter is missing the signatures of Prime Minister Rama, Parliamentary Speaker Gramas Ruchi, Minister of Diaspora Maiko, former Minister Jafai, and the Chair of the Law Committee Ulsi Manya. According to the majority, the President's decision to cancel the June 30 elections has violated the Constitution, assuming the attributes of Parliament and sovereignty. Even though the majority is set to dismiss President Mehta, it again asks the President to reflect on his stance on the election before the proposal is brought before the Assembly on Thursday for voting. Submission to the Assembly is the first first step of the procedure that leads to the establishment of the Investigative Commission. A report will be published after the verifications have been presented at a parliamentary session. The President will then be given the right to give his arguments. The majority needs 94 votes to dismiss Meta, and once they have been received, the report must be reviewed by the Constitutional Court. However, the Constitutional Court is currently non-functional due to a lack of members. Further compounding the complexity of this situation is that the approval to appoint any new members to the Constitutional Court would need to be signed off by President Mehta himself. The Democratic Party accuses the Interior Minister Sandor Leshai of committing blackmail with political intentions and warning that he, he be made to take responsibility for this action. In a letter directed to Minister Leshai, and that holds the signatures of the DP's Secretary General, Guzman Bardi, the Democrats allege that the minister called a meeting with Basha's bodyguard, a member of the Republic's guard, issuing a threat towards Basha. Guzman Bardi writes in the letter that Mr. Leshai has violated any procedure and any institutional way of dealing with this issue. In the Democratic Party letter for the Interior Minister, it is stated that by taking into account the circumstances and legal violations in dealing with this issue, the suspicion that the real purpose of this meeting was the blackmail of the opposition chair has been revived. Regarding this threat, RTV Aura has learned that the President called a meeting with both the head of the State Intelligence Service and the member of the Guard of the Republic in an attempt to uncover more information about the event. President Ilir Meto has held a meeting which lasted about two hours with the ambassadors of the European Union at the Brigade Palace. Sources informed that the meeting was held to discuss the current po domestic political crisis that has engulfed Albania in recent months and the potential for civil conflict should Prime Minister Rama continue leading the country. Sources explained that the President provided clarification to the EU ambassadors as to why he annulled the decree for the elections and outlined his arguments as to how the postponement of elections is based on the constitution. He also noted that the annulment of the decree has been published in the official notebook and therefore has legal power. Meanwhile, the Central Election Commission issued a response to the President regarding his request for information on the number of MPs in the Parliament. According to the response of the CEC, the Parliament currently has 122 active mandates. The response also includes a list of the current Assembly MPs for each electoral zone. The President's request has been interpreted by some as a move towards dissolving the Parliament.
The first clash between local government and the police on the release of facilities to be used to conduct the June 30th elections occurred today in Škodra. The mayor issued a written request to the police for support in releasing the CEAZ, with the notice also containing permission to enter by force. However, when the municipal police demanded the premises be made available, they faced the opposition. The Democratic Party representatives based their position on the president's decree being annulled, while the police respected the official position of the majority who have declared the head of state's declaration as null and void. Despite the collision, neither party retreated. Next to CEAZ number two, representatives of the municipal police and law enforcement remain. In the midst of the debate on the Negotiating Council's decision for Albania and North Macedonia, European Commissioner Johannes Hahn seems to have forgotten Albania while speaking with journalists before the start of the meeting with the Foreign Affairs Council, as he only made reference to North Macedonia. I can just repeat that North Macedonia deserves a green light without delay, as they have done everything. It is an important signal also for the entire region that a kind of investment in finding a political compromise is rewarded. It will serve as incentive also to solve the Serbia-Kosovo conflict, added Hahn. Hahn said that the country has invested heavily in the European perspective and that this should be rewarded. One country has tremendously invested in the European perspective. Their leadership has shown courage and real leadership. And if this is not rewarded, we lose not only our accountability, but also our credibility. And finally, our leverage. Everything we have invested in successfully in the last couple of years is at risk if we're not committed to our own promises, explained Hahn. Meanwhile, the High Representative of the European Union, Federica Mogherini, praised the Presper Agreement but did not forget about Albania. Today is exactly one year after the signing of the historic Presper Agreement between Greece and North Macedonia. We will need to remind ourselves the power of leadership and courage, as well as the important steps that have been taken in the Western Balkans. And I hope that the Member States will remember this and acknowledge the steps forward, in particular in the coming days, with an important decision to be made for the opening of accession negotiations for both Albania and North Macedonia. I hope and I believe this will be done as soon as possible, said Mogherini. During the meeting, the Foreign Affairs Minister of the EU member states will specifically define the enlargement strategy, but media speculation suggests that the timeline for opening negotiations is more likely to be for September. Whilst it certainly seems that North Macedonia is the front runner for EU accession, it remains to be seen what position will be taken by the ministers in regards to Albania. The Macedonian government has withdrawn from their previous commitment to hold snap elections if the negotiations with Brussels do not open in June. Leader of the ruling party and Prime Minister of North Macedonia, Zoran Zaev, said that the party will not back the proposal for snap elections as it threatens to slow down the process of European integration. Following the meeting of the Central Council of his Social Democratic Union in Ohrid, Prime Minister Zoran Zaev said that on Sunday that government reform is the safest method to ensure extremist forces do not come into power. Zayev said that the government would be reshuffled by removing eight ministers. It is our position that we should compete our new term in office in order to deliver our strategic goals such as NATO accession and the launch of EU membership talks. We want to send a clear message to EU member countries that we will not allow nationalism and radicalism to return, explained Zayev, adding that the changes will occur this week. According to Zayev, two or three months more before the opening of negotiations do not make much difference. The ratification of NATO protocol is continuing successfully and we are assured by the Member States that the European Council will come out with a positive report on June 21. After the Bundestag verification in September, I think we will have the final date for negotiations in the next month, said Zayev. Zayev expressed dissatisfaction with the efforts of several ministries and subordinate departments, warning the involvement of cabinet ministers and over 100 party officials in organisational structures. On the other hand, the opposition held a party rally where many accusations were made against the ruling government, such as declaring their incapability and seeking to hold new elections to steer the country out of what they referred to as stagnation. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.